Okay, please let us know if y'all can hear us. We have been trying yes. to come on here for the yes. last, what, hour? Hour, more than more. an hour, about an, an hour, hour and 15 minutes at this point. Yes. Um, can you hear us? Can y'all respond in the chat? Can you do the thing and let me know? Um, I'm trying to pull it up here. Oh, here's my notification. Okay. Okay, live now. Okay. If you could let us know if you can hear us, I hope. Hour? Yeah. Hour. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can hear us. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Cool. 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 Okay. Okay. Can y'all respond to make sure that <laughs> <laughs> listen? We, we, we don't at this point. Okay. Um. We want somebody from the other side of this video to or the other side of this camera to tell us, yo, y'all can hear us. Nikki B, where you at? <laughs> Brian, where you at? We need somebody to tell us that y'all can hear us. Please, in the comment, tell us you can hear us. We've been at this for about an hour, 15 minutes. So, somebody, I see it's like three people on here. Can y'all let us know if y'all hear us? Please. I'm doing a watch party. Okay. All right. So, let me, let me, let me check this out and see. So, I'm going to double check to make sure that y'all can hear us. And I see we have a couple people on here, but I can't quite tell. Who oh, man. People put the sad face. Oh, right no. Here. Really? Yeah, no. Nah, this was three minutes ago. Okay. Yeah, this was three minutes ago. So. Can y'all hear us now? Yeah. Do we get some feedback saying they can hear us? Oh, no. Um, I can hear you. Sister Diane says she can hear us. Awesome, awesome. Praise God. You don't understand oh, what I'm Praise a God. You don't is. understand what we've been going through. <laughs> You don't know the struggle. I promise y'all don't know the struggle, but the struggle is real. I'm telling y'all, the struggle is real. He's, um, he's unplugged everything. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to give him suggestions on, did you try this? Is this on? It's just crazy. Looking up videos to try to navigate through. So this isn't the approach that we thought we were going to take Not at all. our streaming because we thought we would be able to be on YouTube, yeah. Instagram, and Facebook all at the same yeah. time. But you know what? Sometimes things don't always go as we plan. And that's okay. We still have a smile on our face. We still have our joy. <laughs> you hear me? We still got our joy. We still got our joy. Look. Still got our joy. So... So. We're waiting on, I see that we have five people here yeah. with us. If you can just kind of put in the comments, because I'm having a challenge again. I guess we, we're just tired. I we're just tired. I can't even see who's here. I'm not supposed to be able to see who's here. When Something I, like that. Yeah. I can't see who's here. Can y'all just throw your names in the comment box, and then we'll give it about maybe 60 seconds. Yeah. Um, and then we'll hop into the content for this evening. So Dang, I, I know we had some I'm on earlier with us and mm -hmm. we appreciate everyone who came at eight central standard time yeah. to join us this evening. I know we sent out reminders and everything, but like I said, sometimes things just don't go as planned. And we have some technical, I call them opportunities. Yeah. I don't like to call them challenges. I like to call them opportunities because it mm -hmm. gives us an opportunity to grow in a different area that we mm -hmm. didn't, know, <laughs> didn't know. So I try to put up. Very frustrating, y'all. Very frustrating. But we're about to get started here in a minute. Well, Sister Diane says she's going to bed and good night. So thank you for hanging out with us Sister. and for letting us know that you could hear us. So have a wonderful night, Sister Diane. We love and miss you. Man, Stevens. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we so. appreciate it. All right, okay. and for those eight viewers, because I do see eight viewers on nine, here, mm -hmm. or nine now, if you could just kind of put your name in the comment. I know there's a way that I'm supposed to be able to see. Um, not Maybe it has to be on your end, Jermaine, if you click on it, on um, the eyeball. Um, where's that at? The eyeball on the top. Too. Oh, really? Okay. Hold well, on, maybe on. not. Look, at this point, I'm Look, nervous don't, to touch don't fool, anything. Don't fool around. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Don is there, Steven's there, okay, and blah, 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 blah. Okay. okay, yeah, let's just... Okay, we're good, well, okay. We're good. Whoever's here, thanks. Whoever's here, thank y'all for being patient with us. We appreciate it. Okay, so we're just going to dive in? Yeah, we're about to dive in. So, basically, y'all, icebreaker, here we go. 
I have a question for y'all, and this question for my wife too. She don't even know what the question is and I'm at this point. Yeah, he was like, yeah. I have something for you. Yeah, that um, I'm not gonna tell you what it is. I was like, wow, you're gonna mm-hmm. wait until the live to ask. So okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyways, can y'all hear Nicole? Can y'all hear? Let me say something. Say uh, something. You gotta say something though, so they can see if they can hear you. Okay, hold on. Say and you know one. why? That's why I'm not seeing the comments. They probably are commenting. But I'm looking at my, um, I got y'all, I'm good. I'm looking at my watch party as opposed to your actual video. We're, we're going to get there, y'all. Yeah, can y'all hear Nicole? I know she's further away, but hey. Yes, we can. Thank you, Don. Okay, thanks, Don. We appreciate it, Don. Hey, Don. Okay, awesome. Okay, listen, here's the ice-breaking question. Um, would you be okay... And listen, we live in a new age now. Now, listen, we holding it down for the millennials. For y'all that don't know, the age bracket for millennials is 26 years old to 40 years old. All right. So if you was born anywhere from 1980 all the way up to 1994, you're a millennial. Anything after that, we don't claim y'all. Y'all Gen Z's. Sorry, y'all didn't make it with us. But anyways, it seems to be this new phenomenon going around with Gen Z's and also with Younger millennials, I want to say, where the woman is proposing to the dude. Okay, so I got a question for y'all. Would you put up with a dude? I'm sorry, put up with a woman. Is put up the right word? Okay, would you be okay with a woman proposing to a dude? Are you are you okay with that? I'm gonna tell you right now, I wouldn't be okay with it. Nicole would never do it. She'll tell you. I thought you were asking me. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> See, look, we, like, listen, I, we've been in this for, like, I, for 20 you. years <laughs> now, y'all. So I kind of know where she's going. Would you put up with that? Would you okay. break down a propose to me? No. I know everybody's different. I get it, right? For me, he's asking me as Nicole, as Nikki. Personally, I would not. Just personally. And I'm going to tell you why. So the Bible says, he that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing and has favor with the Lord. I believe that God shows the man who his spouse should be. And yes, he confirms it with us women too. You know, he'll give us signs and show us like, yes, this is the spouse that I have for you. But as far as me asking the man to join me, no, I am his rib. That God, you know, when God, God made man first and he made woman and he took Adam's rib to make woman. So I don't personally feel like I should be the one to ask to join you. If you want me as your wife, Mm -hmm. then you need to pursue me. And you can call it old fashioned or whatever you want to call it. But that's just for me. What they saying in the comments? I'm allowed (laughs) to see that. Don said absolutely not. (laughs) What's up? She, she is said, not I changed. You ain't changed, Don. Nah. Yeah, and then she said, I don't think women realize how much power we have to choose whether or not to accept. Why would you give that up? Yeah, yeah. It's almost like, and, you know, just to, I don't want to go there, but I'm going to just go and go there since you said it. It's almost like we make an idol of marriage. Like, you know, we got to go to these extreme lengths to get married. Just so we can feel whole. Well, well, I want to speak to that, though, too. Yeah, oh, go ahead. No, because what I'm saying is, because I hear what you're saying with the we idolize marriage, but I mm-hmm. really think, honestly, that some people idolize weddings. Like, I think yeah. some people just want the ceremony. They want to have the big, beautiful dress. They want to have the fancy reception. Mm-hmm. They want to have all their bridesmaids and their outfits and all the, you know, just the what appears to be glamour. But I think that some people After the wedding, you still got to have a marriage. Yeah, that wedding is one day long. And that one day flies by. Like, you do all Honey, this you planning. Give to, it's a couple hours. <laughs> just a couple <laughs> hours. Yeah, well, but, but I'm saying... I know, I know, I know. You know, you got to get up, get your hair done. Mm-hmm, all that mess. You yeah. know, get ready, uh, get your uh, pictures taken before. Dudes, then we just show up with our haircut. Let's go. Get our makeup done. Yeah. So it does become a whole day production that mm-hmm. you plan months yeah. for. Um... But it's that one, and it is important, but we have to realize that after the wedding, there needs to be a marriage, Yeah. and that marriage may not be 
as glamorous as the wedding. I think some people have that wake up call and reality sets in like, oh my goodness, okay, so we're not dressed up. Yeah. All eyes aren't on us. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, it's like not our special day. We're not riding off in the limo or the horse and carriage. Yeah, yeah. And wow, I'm having to look at you every single day and life is hitting and different Mm -hmm. things are happening. You know what I mean? Right, right. So it's like marriage is more than just a wedding. So, but like you said, I think some people want that wedding and that ceremony so bad to where it's to the point to where I'm willing to To ask you. Yeah, I'm willing to ask you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it kind of it takes away the thrill for the man. I, I can't speak for all men, but I'm going to speak for myself and most men. How about that? Men, we are hunters. Not to compare y'all to an animal, but we're hunters. We are. The pursuer. We're, the pursuer. Yeah, we're the pursuers. We like to pursue. We like the fun of the hunt. All right? And sometimes if you go and you're like, oh, okay, well, listen, game, I'm here. You know, I'm just going to go ahead and break down the propose to you because da 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 you dragging your feet or whatever. To me, it would make it seem like you're not a catch. And it would take away the thrill of a hunt. Yeah, you got to give, give the man a chase. Like. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> and, and what would happen is with some dudes, they might be like, you know what? I couldn't find my, I couldn't find what I needed. So I'm going to go hunt for something else. Something that's a challenge for me. You see what I'm saying? So, because you know how, like in some movies that you watch, it seems like um, the men, mm-hmm. like you said, I guess it's looked at as a challenge when you see the woman who is not giving them the time of day. Yeah, like, yeah. It, it, in the movie, I can go only go off the movies because you know I've never been a man. <laughs> But I'm just saying, it seems like it's more of a challenge. Like, okay, oh, wow, she's not giving me the time of day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to chase after her. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, so, long story short, y'all, that was just a little quick ice-breaking question. We ain't about that life at all. I ain't never going to have, I would never have Nikki propose to me. And if she did propose to me, y'all, I would look at her as some kind of way. I really would. I love the girl. I've been in love with her since we were 16, since I was 16 years old, but I couldn't rock with that. I just couldn't. So to each his own, but <laughs> that's a little nice little ice breaking question. So anyways, the yeah. subject, the stuff that we're going to be discuss, we're going to be discussing is quarantine. So marriage in quarantine, COVID-19. Yeah. yeah. We're also going to be discussing competition and we're also going to be talking about the importance of building together. All right, and we're going to cap it off. Y'all, this is That Christian Fam, a.k.a. The King's Realm. That is our YouTube channel. Y'all go ahead and go over to YouTube sometime. Go ahead and make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell because we drop content every Tuesday and Friday at 10 a.m. Central. Central. I'm always struggling with Central. <laughs> Central Standard Time faithfully. Every Tuesday and Friday, we're dropping content. We're dropping a video. So if y'all like this, there's more content just like this. There's more uh, Christian content. You know, there's more uh, things about life from a Christ- Christian's perspective over there. We just got through talking about the whole Will, Jada, and August mess over there. So that's a hot mess. But anyways, we, we're just going to keep it moving. But listen, we're talking about quarantine marriage, y'all. And so I did a video about two, about three months ago or so. Um, and it's titled, What This Quarantine Is Showing Us. And it's on our YouTube channel, That Christian Fam. Um, and basically where I was getting at with that is, listen, this quarantine, what this quarantine has shown us. It is. It has shown us that we have kind of swept a lot of things under the rug over the years. Like, it may not even be years, months or whatever. But the fact that we don't have that commute to work, if for those of us who are working at home, for those of us who are blessed enough to still have a job, praise God. Um, shout out to all the people who, you know, unfortunately are not working at this moment. Um, you know, I know it's hard times, but you know, I didn't really, really want to go there. But for all the people who are working at home, you're not commuting back and forth to work, and you're not in the office, and you're not away from your spouse. You cooped up in the house with your spouse 24 <laughs> 7, 365 days a year. This may end up being 365 days, we don't know. We don't know how long this thing is going to last. But, anyways, by you being confined into a space with your spouse. It's allowing you, it, it, it's, it's, it's showing you some of the, 
how compatible you are, or it may be showing you how non-compatible you are. It may be showing you some of the reasons why you love your spouse so much, and then it may be showing you, you know what, we got some work to do. Or you know what, maybe, maybe, maybe I made a mistake. But anyways, we're going to get into that a little bit later. But yeah, what this because it can go either way. It could go yeah. both ways. Like, okay, yes, it's either going to pull us together closer, yeah. or it's either going to tear us apart. You know, it could yeah. go two ways. Yeah, thank you, Don, for sharing the video. We appreciate that. Yes. But listen, um, that's what the quarantine is showing us. It's showing us all of our flaws. And it's really one of them put up or shut up moments in our in our relationship. Like, hey, either we gonna iron these kinks in the armor out, these chinks in the armor out, or we just gonna chuck the deuces and, and get on up out of here. So yeah, because like when I, I looked up an article on ABC News, yeah, and stunning. this is all the way back in April on April the seventeenth, yeah. and it says surge in divorces anticipated in wake of COVID nineteen quarantine. And so it kind of just talks about how, you know, like Jermaine was saying, you're in the same space all day long, all day long together. Okay. All day long together. Mm -hmm. And for those couples who may be encountering um, the challenges that he spoke on, like if a spouse did um, become unemployed during that time, then there's also the article talks about that financial, financial strain piece. too. So. Mm -hmm. Anytime and then just a, being in a pandemic period is stressful. Yeah. You know, you're you're constantly thinking about your health. Mm -hmm. And I'm not gonna say worry per se, but you're just trying to be on top of every of everything. Yeah. You yeah. know, like are you wearing your mask? Are you wearing your gloves and are you washing your hands? And mm -hmm. you know, like when just being concerned mm -hmm. about the pandemic period. So it's it's a different type of stress. So it is important that we talk about, you yeah. know, cuz divorce rates, divorce yeah. cases are up, people are filing for divorce like I mean, they can't fi file fast enough. People are filing for divorce. Domestic violence uh cases are on the rise from being in the house with your spouse 24/7 3. Now listen y'all, I'm I'm a, I ain't going to shoot you a hot one. All right, everybody needs a break. Everybody needs a break. Yeah. Like everybody needs their own personal time. And we're not, space, yeah, know. yeah. We're not saying that. You know, Nicole, she need her time. I need my time. We're not talking about that. But we're talking about, you know, there being these blatant blemishes or these blatant things that we just swept under the rug, and we could just survive. We're not thriving in our marriage. We're surviving in our marriage. And the only reason we're surviving is because we're sweeping things under the rug. And so what what this quarantine did for us and what it is doing for us is it's, it's and really... And you're talking about us in general. Yeah. Yeah. Us in general, yeah, yeah. So it's 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 really bringing some of those things to the surface. And we're really having to deal with those things head on. So. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like you were saying, couples in general... Um, Prior the COVID nineteen pandemic, if you were having any type of challenges, well, you only had to face each other for a certain amount of time during yeah. the day, right? So mm -hmm. I can kind of get away and go to work, and you go do this, or we have these activities. You can almost hide underneath the busyness of life, but the pandemic is forcing all couples to really look at those nuances and yeah. say, okay, mm -hmm. how are we going to address this? Or maybe I didn't realize right. that you did this while you're working you know i never got to really see that aspect of it you know it just gives you a different lens yeah but something that we want to talk about is how can we kind of keep it yeah but now i know you're going to go there and what i want to say before that okay. right. is this real quick um i've heard the scripture all the time you know for for years what god has put together oh, yeah. what god has put together let no man tear apart or one translation says, let no man put asunder, meaning tear apart. So, and I never really looked at this scripture until about a few years ago where, when our pastor really brought this to our attention. Here's the thing. The text says what God put together, let no man put asunder. Now, listen, we're not advocating for divorce at all. We're advocating for marriage. We like godly marriages. We love those things. This is that's part of our ministry. That's you know we're over a couples ministry in our church. We really love married couple things. We really love that, right? But here's the thing: the text says, "What God put together, let no man put asunder." And so 
when Pastor really brought that to our attention a few years ago, thought about it like, you know what? Hmm. It's really important to make sure that we put ourselves together. Like, it was such a breath of fresh air when I went back and I realized, you know what? I didn't put myself together with Nikki. Now, listen, the initial attraction was there. Yes. Of course, I had to pursue. We talked about that. I got a hunt. Got a, got a hunt. Got a, got a to get her so the initial attraction has to be there right but after the initial attraction ask yourself did you pray about your spouse did you talk to god at all about your spouse did you get godly counsel over this dude or over this chick before you said i do with this person did you like did you really take the time to ask god god is this the person that i'm supposed to be with like it's really important to make sure that we're not just going about this thing willy nilly because the thing about it is divorce. I'm sorry. Marriage has been made a mockery of like we we jump in and out like double dutch in one minute out the next in one minute out the next. And we just talked about that on our last video. But we really have to make sure that this is a till death do us part commitment. It's not an 18 year bid. And for those of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Basically, when you have when you get married, you have a kid. When people say, OK, when that kid turns 18, I'm chucking the deuces. We out. No, it's not an 18 year bid. It's not a prison sentence. It's not a death sentence. It is a marriage. It is a covenant between husband, wife and and, and, and God. So, um. You really need to be real with yourself and ask yourself. Y'all need to talk to each other and say, you know what? Did we put ourselves together or did God put us together? Did we consult God at, about this at all? So that's one of those real conversations. That's a grown man conversation, you know, that you really going to have to have. But I think it's better to have that conversation than to not have that conversation at all. Sorry, go ahead, Nikki, with the, well, with the, and, with the good news. And I'm just looking at some of the comments, too. Um, like Don, the most recent comment said, you better know that you know that you know <laughs> before you say I do. Preach. <laughs> Absolutely, Don. Yes. And then she said also on the flip, um, amazing new levels of intimacy can occur from being in close. Yes. Years. Yes. So listen, that's something else that we talked Listen, about. we about to have another baby boom. Yeah. That's what they're talking about. <laughs> During this quarantine, listen, we about to have a whole nother generation of baby boomers. We got the baby boomers who are dying out. Dying out. We about to have a whole nother surge in babies. They talking about having in the next seven to nine months. Yeah. So. So, where I was going was ways to maintain balance during quarantine, which you kind of talked about. Mm -hmm. So, you know how you said that it's important that you still have your own separate space or time. Like, we cannot be sitting in a, I don't think anybody, I don't think that would be healthy for anybody to just be in the same room. Right. And go for 24-7. Like, that would that's, drive that's crazy. anybody. That's, that's <laughs> like, crazy. But you think about, even Jesus had to steal away, right? Yeah, he had to steal away. Even he had to go off sometime to himself because he just needed that alone time you need time for yourself to process your thoughts yeah. to have just some peace of mind to talk to god so yes so <laughs> nicole said not in this house yeah you <laughs> can't be <laughs> not a finger seven together so one way that you can maintain balance and we do want you to throw out your comments too so we can add this to the video but um Sometimes you just go to separate rooms. There may yeah. be times where Jermaine is in the garage building. He likes to do woodwork, and that's therapeutic for him. He builds pieces of furniture and just different things, you know, for around our house. Yeah. So sometimes he'll steal away and go into the garage. And yeah, I say, you know, I say you still need to try to find a way to yeah. have at least a couple hours to yourself where you have some alone time. Yeah. All right, where ain't nobody bothering you. I mean, especially when you have, as you know, we have younger children. So when you have children... And you're in that space, too. It's important that you also provide that time for your spouse, too. There's yeah. times where Jermaine be like, hey, baby, I got him. He'll let me sleep in, mm -hmm. get some rest. I got their breakfast. Don't worry about it. You know, and... Brian said no more babies. <laughs> no more babies for the braddies. Okay. For the braddies. We'll, we'll come back in nine months and see what that is. Yeah, we'll see what that <laughs> is. Unless Nick... I ain't heard nothing from Nikki B on that. But anyway, so yeah. So no. so the things... Go ahead. The creative ways, whatever I think... Yeah, the yeah, so just making sure that you're providing time for each other to just kind of go off to another place in the house or on the back porch or, you know, sit out in the yard just to have that alone time. And then having the uninterrupted on the contrary, not just having your alone time, providing that for each individual spouse, 
but also mm-hmm. making sure that you're having uninterrupted time together right. with each other too. So even though we can't go out for dates like we used to right, right. now with everything that's going on, and I know that restaurants are open and I get mm-hmm. it, but if you're not to that level of comfort of wanting to actually go sit in a restaurant, especially here in Texas with the numbers, you know, rising, rising. we're not quite there yet. So, mm-hmm. you know, you have to just get creative, you know, do a date night at home, especially like if you have younger mm-hmm. children, get the children to bed, have a nice little candle lit dinner, or maybe sometimes we'll just do a movie and popcorn. Yeah. You know, and little treats to where we just, you know, sit down together but have no interruptions. But I also think it's important to unplug, like put your devices away, yeah. put your phone away. You know, it's so easy to get distracted by that. But if you have any, um, <laughs> Nicole said, y'all's God children won't let us be great and get some good alone time. Put <laughs> <laughs> Ain't letting you be great, huh? <laughs> so. Yeah. So yeah, uh, just be creative and yeah. trying to find to make the date nights at home. Something as simple as you know what, kids, you know, cool. But if you got kids, all the more merrier. That's why you need to sit on the house. Oh, sorry, sit on the house. Sit <laughs> on the couch sometimes and just hold each other's hand. Yeah. Like you know what, babe, I love you. Yeah. I really love you. And like that intimate moment of holding hands. You know what I'm saying? Now holding hands that sound like elementary school, but you know what? Holding hands may lead to something else, you know. Oh, Lord. <laughs> may lead to something else, you know. Hey. Like, mm-hmm. like you said, that whole another level. We're going to make the sign. <laughs> we going to make the sign of the cross. We vertical beam in one minute. And then the, moment, one, the next minute after that, we horizontal beam. Two beams together. I mean, listen. And I was just playing, um, you know, when I said like a whole other level of intimacy. Because I know what you mean by that. Intimacy <coughs> is not always um, sexual. It can be just that whole other level of closeness. You know, you have more time. No, I'm talking about, you know, intimacy. A lot of people confuse that. Yeah. But intimacy is closeness. So being yeah. at your home with each other more, without all the distractions, mm-hmm. you know, you're, that gives you the opportunity to have more conversations, you know? Right. If you choose to. If you or, choose or to. learn a different side of your spouse. Because you should always be learning more and more about your mm-hmm. spouse. We're all changing. You shouldn't be the same person that you are no, now no. than when, you know, that you were then I'm getting my words twisted up. But you shouldn't be who you are you shouldn't be the same person you were now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're always growing is what I'm saying. I, I know y'all follow me. I couldn't get it out right, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, so all right, y'all. So anyways, that's married in quarantine, married, you know, COVID nineteen. Wanna talk about that. But the next subject we're gonna talk about is competition. I know y'all looking like what the heck is he talking about competition? So Nikki, if you wanna go ahead and take that away with that and talk about you know, okay, so shower yeah. your boy for me. <laughs> anyway, yeah. so with the competition piece, um, something that Jermaine and I were talking about, how it's so important that married couples do not get into a competition with each other trying to outdo the other spouse. The thing is, is it's so important to have a spirit of unity and really look at yourselves as being one unit. Mm-hmm. It says that the two were joined together and the two shall become, shall one. become one. The two shall become one. And you mm-hmm. see, I was trying to paraphrase it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the two shall become one. So the thing is, in marriage, we really have to have that mindset that we are one team. One team. Mm-hmm. And that means that if one spouse is doing well, that means that the whole entire team is doing well. Right. And I can even think about... Uh, some specific examples like with Jermaine like when I was working on my college degrees I, I mean for bachelors for masters uh, when I was going through my national board certification each and every time Jermaine was my biggest support <sighs> fan I mean he was he he cheered me on the entire way if I became tired and discouraged and I'm like <laughs> you know, <laughs> he is so silly but anytime that I became tired or discouraged he would be like, hey, you got this. You can do this. Um, you know, like I remember there was a time where I had to turn in a paper and the university that I was attending at the time was 45 minutes away. So I was doing like the remote learning, you know, where they had the different buildings right there in the city I was in. But I had to actually turn in my binder on my project at the actual university. And he took a personal day off of work 
to drive my project to the university to turn it in for With me. Dayton, which yeah. is like well, I wasn't trying to put all away. my business all out there like that. Maybe I didn't want people to know what university. I'm proud of it, but maybe I didn't want it on social media. Man. <laughs> but anyways, no, I'm proud. I'm a proud alumni. But <laughs> you see the way he's looking like he's not even thinking. But I was so grateful to him for doing he did not have to do that. And then each time graduation came He's smiling like bigger than I was. Like he was just on the side, like, yes. Basically, we were graduating together just by me going across that stage, just like we were both, because he was there during nights where he would sleep in the office with me if I'm up typing papers and he would just lay down just to be close to me and support. So it's just important to keep in mind that we are one. Right. We're you know, one. as a married couple, if your spouse is progressing or say they're climbing the mm -hmm. um, career ladder or they're just doing well in whatever area you know that God would have them to do well in it's important that we never look at our spouse like oh well they're better than me or wow they really got stuff going on well for them but it's not happening for me no we are one team mm -hmm. we are one team We're so one when team. one does well we both do well. We, we both, both have, do well. Yeah, it so, represents the, the family. So, for instance, uh, listen, y'all, to each their own, but for the King household, let me tell you, up in Kingsville, let me tell you how we get down. We have the same checking account. All right, we got two accounts, and guess what? We both on both of those accounts. I'll tell you why. Because um, as she goes, I go. As I go, she goes. It's all coming towards, it's all paying the same bills. If... If, 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 for instance, if she is in charge of paying the electric bill or something, well, you know what? If it don't get cut, if it don't get paid, we all going to suffer, right? <laughs> we all finna be up in the dark with some candles, all right? If I'm responsible for paying the gas bill, like, if I don't pay the bill, we all going to be taking some cold showers, right? <laughs> and so we just decided to say, you know what? We in this thing together. And we just decided to just put our funds all together. When and we I, actually yeah. started off marriage like that. Yeah, we started counseling. off marriage because like that. Because when we were going through, um, you know, mm -hmm. your premarital counseling with your pastor, our pastor actually advised, you know, said it's a good thing to have one Yeah, he said account. that. And but he, even if he didn't say it, I was going to do it anyway. I know, but we did take his advice. Yeah, we took, <laughs> we took his advice. Man, you know, so when I get paid, guess what? We got paid. When she gets paid, guess what? We got paid because we all benefiting. We all buying groceries. We, I mean, we don't we don't look at it and say, well, you know what? I brought these groceries with my money, and so therefore I have to. No, we, she goes as she goes, I go. So I remember, like just last week, we saw this rerun of Family Matters, and Carl Winslow was on there. Okay, um, Carl so, Winslow. Yeah, Carl Winslow. Carl Winslow was basically saying, you know what, um, his, his wife had got a promotion. And when his wife got a promotion, what had happened was um, he, instead of him being excited about his, his wife getting a promotion, he was insecure because what, it, what, what, what that made it to, that made it to where she was going to be making more money than him. All right, and he felt some type of way about that. He he felt like, yo, this didn't make him the man. Matter of fact, in that episode, he went out and got him a side job just so he could make more money than her by like $23 a year. And that was just stupid. So like it, it just goes to show even back then in the in the early 90s what the mentality was of tour of men and and you know some men still had that mentality to where they have to be the one making the most money and if they don't make the most money then somehow they're less of a man and that's that's archaic that's an archaic mindset um that doesn't unify that doesn't um what is it that doesn't uh, what is what am i looking for that doesn't represent oneness at all mm. that that represents two-ness if that's even a word so and, and, and honestly, y'all, we have to just just tell it like it is. A lot of this has been a lot of this. This problem has been ingrained in us. It's been ingrained in us to just basically not trust. Basically, you have like mamas and old mothers and all that other stuff. And some men, too, would say, you know what? You know, or they say, girl, you always got to have a backup plan. Have you a know, nest egg is what mm, they call it. Have a nest egg just in case he stopped tripping. It's just, just in case he starts start tripping. tripping. Mm -hmm. It's like, 
you're setting the precedent for um, distrust or untrust. Because as soon as some jump off or as soon as he loses his job or as soon as some catastrophe in life happens, you're going to go and say, see, I knew da 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 And this is why I do this because I knew you was going to start tripping. I knew you wasn't dependable. All of that stuff. Listen, if you have a plan B, then you don't have a plan A. If you have a plan B, you don't have a plan A. You halfway into plan A, but you ain't got a real plan A. Because when you got a plan A, you ain't got a plan B. And he's talking about when it comes to marriage. Yes, when it comes yeah, to marriage. Yeah, when it comes to marriage. Because in life, of course, you have a plan A all the way through Z. Right. Right, you have a backup for the backup. But when it comes to marriage, um, it's almost like it becomes a self-fulfilled prophecy if you think about it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you go into like, well, just in case he starts tripping and just in case this happens and that but then that's always in the back of your mind mm -hmm. so you're not going to really give yourself fully to that person or to the relationship because it's almost like that thought and that seed is always there yeah that yeah. something is going to go wrong and when you think like that and you anticipate the bad or anticipate the negative then you really don't get to truly enjoy the good and the positive fully because it's like well, just in case, I'm going to stay guarded just mm -hmm. in case something goes wrong with this. So, right. you don't get to take it all in. Right, you don't get to take it all when, in. When so, you anticipate the negative. Yeah. yeah, you anticipate negative. You anticipate problems going wrong. You, I mean, problems, you know, in your marriage. You anticipate those things. Of course, we need to plan. We're not saying that. But don't anticipate negative things happening when it's concerning your spouse. And so, if you don't have trust if you don't trust your if you don't trust your spouse with your life, then you're always gonna feel like you need to level up. You always feel like you need to be a level ahead of them. And the word of God says the two shall become one flesh. Alright, the two shall become one flesh. And so if you're one flesh, then you don't ever have to have a need to have any competition. There's no competition because you don't want to compete with yourself or against yourself. You see what I'm saying? So we're all we're one flesh, all right. So, you got anything else to add to that? No, I think I think that covers it. Just making sure that we're remembering that we're on the same team and you know supporting each other. Yeah. And just really trusting that God will lead your spouse mm -hmm. and that He'll reveal to you if something is not right. Yeah, cheer your spouse on when when something's good with them. If something good happens to them, it happened to both of y'all. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Last thing we're gonna talk about is building together the importance of building together and so when i look okay um when i look back over the life i have with nikki that we've built um we've been married for it'll be 16 years this august we've been together for 20 years praise god we're excited about that i'm excited about it you excited <laughs> yeah, about excited it about i'm excited about it. <laughs> about it so anyways we got sweet three kids coming up yes yeah, sweet 16 august. coming up excited about that too um I'm talking about sweet 16 years of marriage, you know? Yeah, I'm talking oh, about okay. sweet, yeah, yeah. sweet 16, yeah. Uh -huh. Not just the night, just the fact that we hit 16, amen. But anyways, we got three kids, y'all. We got an eight-year-old, six-year-old, four-year-old. No, and, nine. Oh, dang. <laughs> he just turned nine two weeks ago, y'all. Um, Yeah, two weeks ago. Three. Right? Two weeks. Two. Time is fine. No, it's... Dang, man. Time is flying. Almost three weeks. Look, yeah. Come Sunday, come tomorrow, it'll be three weeks. It'll be three weeks. Oh, gosh, time is flying. Yeah. Anyways, so the boy just turned out. Anyways, we got three kids. And just reflecting on the, the life with me and, that me and Nikki have built, um, I'm really grateful to God that we actually built our lives together. We built our lives together. Um, you know, and it's not like I can point to some big, wonderful thing and one, you know, wonderful thing in particular and say, you know what? Wow, we built that together. We built that together. But the, the fact is we built our lives together. Our lives are so intertwined and interweaved together to where if there was a separation, I would lose a great majority of myself and she would lose a great majority of herself. Basically, um... As far as, uh, I guess, what I'm, what I'm trying to say. Not just financially, but just things in life. We have built a life together. And it's important to make sure that you build 
your lives together. Even if it's something that you can point to and say, you know what? We built this right here. We built this together. Because the more things that you interweave with each other, it's going to be that much of a deterrent for you to ever separate. Because when you're doing your thing over her and she doing her thing over her, what happens is you're just doing your thing. Y'all just doing your thing individually. And so when trouble comes, it's going to be that much easier to chuck the deuces and say, peace, you know what? Listen, you got your thing over her. I got my thing over her. We good. But it's important to actually intent be intentional on building something with your spouse. I don't care if it's a it's a a charity you want to start or it's a it's some type of um, uh, memory or or what is it memorial you want to start or something like that. Something that you have built together and you can point back at and say, you know what, we did this right here together. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and just to clarify, you're not saying that you can't have two different careers or no, you know, different no. things. I just want to just be clear for our Facebook viewer or you know social media viewers that that's not what he's saying at no. all. As far as you know, over here doing your thing and doing you know, God can have you both serving in different areas. But like he's saying, there still needs to be something that the two of you come together to build. There's a reason why God put the two of you together because you complement one another. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be something that will benefit each other, the world, and ultimately the kingdom of God. Right. Right. So I think that's really awesome. I think it's very important to make sure you build together. So um, y'all, that is basically what we do have is there are there any other comments or any other questions y'all have this is that Q&A spot that we have designated do you have any questions for us at yeah, all throw something out there let's yeah throw something on. out there even if it's just a comment feedback question topic ideas yeah. for future something videos something you want us to discuss anything and we know that it's late, especially on the East Coast. Well, I say East Coast, but Eastern nah, Standard nah, Time. Nah. Ohio, y'all not the Midwest. Y'all really East. Uh, I'm sorry to tell you, y'all not, y'all not East. Y'all, I mean, y'all not Midwest. Y'all East. So it's almost 11 o'clock there. We yeah. do um, want to say thank you for everyone that tuned in. We have people from all over. I know right off from um, Texas, from Ohio. I think we had someone from Oklahoma, possibly, uh, mm -hmm. join us. Who was that? Uh, okay, Latitra. Uh, hey. How do you talk to your spouse when you feel they don't listen? That's a good question, isn't it? Good yeah. question. Mm -hmm. Um, And then they turn it back on you. I know I've said this before. And this is, this is really, um, I'm saying before in general. I noticed that. When I'm quiet, like if it seems like we're not really seeing eye to eye on a subject or a topic, I notice that when I get quiet, he'll kind of come back. Kansas City, shout out. He'll come back most of the times and he'll tell me how I'm feeling. And that's with him being a believer in Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's with him being a godly man who really does seek, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm getting congested, who really does seek God. And allows God to lead him. There's times where if it's something that just didn't sit right with me. And if I'm quiet about it. You know, I can say something, of course. I'm not saying that in a, in a loving way. But if it just seems like, uh, it's not really getting through. Then I, I'm i telling you, seriously. If you pray on it and let God work on that person. A lot of times I, he'll come back and say, you know what? I probably could have said that differently. Or mm -hmm. I probably could have done that differently or I noticed this made you feel this way and this really was not my intent you know I truly love you and I would, would never intend on you know hurting your feeling you know prayer really does work it and, does work and mm -hmm. go ahead go ahead man I was really going to say like you know you basically talking about how you can say something and it seems like they don't listen you know what they heard you they just wouldn't they heard you. They just ain't listening. But so guess what? Like, yeah. yeah. So there, here's the thing. Honestly, and this really takes a man of God to do this. It really does. Because I could be frustrated. And then, you know what? That Holy Ghost has just turned me up. Like, really like, killing my conscience. Like, you know what? You wasn't right, bro. You just wasn't right. And, like, honestly, it takes for you to say with your peace. Say what you got to say. Because... He heard you. He just ain't listening. 
And so in that situation, what you can do is say what you got to say, leave it alone. And a man of God will eventually be convicted on his own by the Holy Ghost. And does it help mm-hmm. sometimes too, Jermaine? Like, if you feel like the person isn't listening to you verbally, because mm-hmm. okay, let me point out two things real quick on that one. One, when you heard me say, you know, I, I can say what I need to say to let it be known how I feel in a loving way, but then kind of get quiet. Because one of my things that I have learned is, and I'm constantly learning and constantly growing. But one thing that I have learned is that if I'm doing all the talking. And what some people would call nagging, then my spouse, Jermaine, he can't hear what the Holy Spirit is saying yes. to him because I'm drowning it out. So, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes it really, and the Bible talks about how a gentle word turns away wrath. Right. Um, you know, and even the value of knowing when to say something annoying, when sometimes just to be quiet in the yes. sense of not letting that not quiet to where you lose who you are as a person but quiet in a sense of okay I've said what I need to say and now I'm really and protect your mental too yeah your mental not get frustrated you know what I I need to protect my peace I need to have peace of mind so I'm gonna say what I need to say I'm gonna say it in love if you don't take it you don't take it but I'm gonna need what I'm gonna say at least I've expressed it you don't want it to build up either you know and become that whole straw that breaks the camel's back but do you think that sometimes that also helps Jaren like if you try another form of communication like maybe if instead of talking verbally sometimes I may text him or he may text me if it's something that didn't sit right with him sometimes if you put it in writing it kind of gives the person an opportunity they can meditate on them words looking like you know what wow yeah this is really how she feels this is really how he feels you know, so yeah, yeah, I, I think that's good. So, you know, I think that that's great. Um, and so, like I said, just, just protecting your me- mental. But what? Hey, women, y'all tune in for this. Y'all gonna love what I'm about to say. Listen, bruh, brothers, I'm gonna tell you this. What we call nagging from women, oftentimes, is some of the best things that we can we can hear. What we call nagging from women is some of the best things that we can hear. Um, because God, if, if, if God put them in our lives and we're just going to say, okay, he did. Right. Okay. Your wife is always going to push you to be your best self. Your wife is always going to push you to be what God wants you to be. She, a good wife is not going to push you to be what she wants you to be, but she's going to say those little things like, you know, she'll, she'll, she'll say stuff to you. Like if you said something, uh, and you were kind of short with somebody or something like that. And if she brings that to your attention, guess what? That's good. That's a good thing. Maybe you do need to learn to be a little bit nicer to people. Maybe you do need to watch how you talk to people. Maybe you do need to learn to show up on time. Maybe you do need to learn how to take out the trash and be responsible or iron your own clothes. Just be responsible. Some of those things that we call nagging, y'all, it's not really nagging. It's just something that we don't want to hear. Now, on the flip side of that, I will say it this. Say it like this. <laughs> I will say it like this. Um, very, Be very careful how you say it as well. Okay? Absolutely. Because, because what we have to understand, and this is for male and female, it's not about what you say, but it's about how, how you say it. You say it. That's right. True. How you say it. So make sure you package it in love. Even though they don't want to hear it, guess what? It's something they need to hear. You know, you always know the signs of a good friend because a good friend won't tell you what you want to hear. A good friend is going to tell you what you need to to hear. Yeah. Right. So, so women, you know, kudos to y'all, you know, and and kudos to the men too. The men who say things to their spouse that the spouse that you know the wife doesn't want to hear but you know they they might need to hear it it may help them out so the bible says iron sharpens iron yeah all right and so that's just that's in a lot of different contexts so it's for us to edify each other and not tear each other down so does anybody else have any other questions how you say it okay okay how you say it any other questions? she said how you say it awesome yeah. okay awesome. absolutely mm-hmm. thank you Latija, for throwing that out there that was good 
That was really good. That was really good. Does anybody else have any other questions or any comments or want to chime in and tell us how we did? Did you get any value out of anything that we said tonight? You know, or were we just out there flapping in the wind? <laughs> Not flapping in the wind. No. <laughs> flapping in the wind. Really? Gums just going. <laughs> Lips just going. Did y'all get any value of it? You know, any of y'all got any any questions? Anybody? Well, I enjoyed our time together. Mm -hmm. I did. It was a blessing for me. Thank you, Ty. She said, this is a blessing. Yes. And yes. just seeing everyone's feedback. You see, I was trying to respond. I got a little bit behind on here um, to the comments as they were coming in. But yes, thank you so much. Um, we're grateful for you too, Ty. We love and miss you. Uh -huh. Down at Houston. Be safe. Yes. So, I know that we... Stayed on here a little bit later than we okay. anticipated. So I think we're going to go ahead. Thank you, Latidra. We love you, too. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. We we her. You know what I'm saying? You know, hit up, hit up Nikki. We're always here to help. Always here to help. You know, so we really do just have a heart for marriages. Godly marriages. We really do. You know, the enemy wants it to fail. You know, there's a lot of things out there in society that are plotted against uh, two parent households, husband and wives, but uh, we believe that it is a an institution. It's instituted by by God, and it is something that it's He a wants. Covenant. Mm -hmm. I said a covenant relationship. Yeah, a covenant relationship. Yeah. It's covenant relationship, and that's how you build strong families by having a strong nucleus between the husband and the wife. Yeah, well, between the husband and the wife, if I could talk. <laughs> Yeah. All right, y'all. So as your main said, every Tuesday and Friday, we have a new video that comes out, 10 o'clock Central Standard Time. On that time. Christian fam, for some of y'all that just chimed in, we have a YouTube channel, y'all. Y'all go ahead and go over to YouTube and type in that Christian fam. Not that Christian family, but that Christian fam. All right, that's short for family, if y'all ain't, ain't hip to the game. But um, we drop content every Tuesday and Friday at 10 a.m. Central Central Standard Time. <laughs> so, you know, so and make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the notification bell. So you'll be one of the first people to hit to hear what we got to say. All right, y'all. Well, God's many blessings be upon you and enjoy the rest of this week and everyone stay safe. Mm -hmm. All right. Y'all take care. Be blessed. <laughs>